Mr. Gruja Stevenov was born in Banat, Serbia in 1959. His parents were Arcadia and Angelica. In 1959, Mr. Stevenov escaped from Yugoslavia in an 18 feet boat to Italy. In 1960, he came to Toronto, Canada by a passenger ship. Tell us how you arrived in Canada. Uh, 30, 34 years ago, I decided enough, it's enough. So I stole the boat. I used to live on an island on the Adriatic coast. Stole the boat and rode and with a one cylinder engine. I came over to Italy. It took me about three days, but I made it. And uh, I remained in camp for about 16 months before I got the visa to enter Canada. I had a relatives and they made a guarantee for me. And I started working in a dry cleaning business with my relatives. About uh, six to eight months, I learned some English and made my license, driving license, and I went to work as a mechanic, which was my trade. By the way, I decided when I was 14 that I want to be a mechanic because Canada, America, used to be called America, had lots of cars. So I chose to be a mechanic. I started working in Toronto. Money wasn't good enough, so I went for a truck driver. I was making double the money for less time. I was spending lots of money, but about a year and a half later, I decided to start the business. And instead of going in a garage, I went in a dry cleaning business. Made my experience, went back in a garage, and I was well paid as a mechanic, got my license, Canadian license, which is, and I decided to go to reduce my wages to learn automatic transmissions, which I did. I learned automatic transmissions, which was a new thing at that time, way back in 1963. And through the owner where I used to work, he lined up a job for me in Detroit. Not knowing, I picked up my tools and I moved, I came to Windsor and I wanted to cross the bridge. I was turned back. I was ashamed to go back in Toronto and I remained in Windsor. That was in 1965. And in 65, a week later, I came to the church, Serbian church, and uh, inquired about a dance group and community life. What did you do for a living in Windsor? Oh, worked as a mechanic. Uh, then I bought my cab, taxi, and I worked in a garage. Had a drivers driving a cab. Then I went for a cab driver and back in the garage and worked as a service manager in uh, Kmart on his side. A friend of mine called me to go to Yugoslavia for a visit. He made all, all the arrangements and we went to Toronto, jumped the plane, went over, and in 1968, I was lucky I got married. In Yugoslavia? In Yugoslavia. And uh, in 1969, my wife, Jagora, came uh, 
in April. And in May, we had a wedding over here. I worked as a mechanic. And I decided to open up a restaurant, ethnic restaurant, strictly Serbian food. Where so, was it? So I did uh, bought a building on Ottawa Street in Windsor and put her to work as a cook and a dishwasher. I remained working in a garage and every noon lunchtime I called uh, to see how is everything. And suddenly she said, I don't know what the hell is going on, but people are coming like crazy. And they mentioned magazine. So I took off from the garage, came in a restaurant, there was no dish, there was no food left. Helped a little bit, and then I went to inquire which magazine, which turned out to be a Chatelaine of Canada. The headline was, uh, Windsor, could you live there? And promoted the uh, ethnic restaurant, which, by the way, you couldn't buy a French fries for $1,000, or a hot dog, or a hamburger. And after a while, well, we sold uh, newspaper, records, then we opened a delicatessen beside the restaurant. What was the name of the restaurant? Lala's Place. And uh, I wanted to go big. So I looked into it and I bought the property on, in La Salle, four acres on the water, beautiful building, nice restaurant, and named it Gypsy Baron. And then I started bringing the entertainment. And about after three years, the tough time was, and I went broke. So broke that I lost $120,000. And believe me, whoever watches this, it was very tough after that time. So what for, did you do to, for a living then? I went moonlighting in Detroit. I worked as a chef in a private club for about two years. I was paying a little bit my private debts and everything. But I never gave up. Then I started a small garage on Windhout Street. The building got sold. I had to move. I found an order. I was selling cars and fixing cars. And in 1985, a man came from Serbia. Couldn't speak a word of English, but he had a small business back home, which was a label industry. And somebody, I can't remember who introduced us, and we became friends. And he persuaded me to go with him to be his salesman, purchasing agent. Uh, or what, I'll put it this way, general manager in everything, translator, and delivery boy. And Where was the location? Uh, location was in, uh, behind the Devon, in the Devon Park, mm -hmm. Devonshire, by the Devonshire Mall. It was a small place, but uh, we started growing up, uh, and believe me, I didn't know nothing about the labels other than read the label on the product that you want to buy. And when I started selling, buying, I didn't know what is the pressure sensitive paper. I didn't know nothing about it. Three months later, being me, myself on the telephone on the road, I pushed about $16,000 a month sales, which was very rapid growth. Later on, three more months, I picked up a huge account, which is uh, Farmer Jack at that time in Detroit. And that boosted my sales. And 
I start feeling comfortable and looking for a huge accounts, which I did picked up here and there, fairly good accounts. But the man never paid me for my work. So I inquired with a couple of guys and persuaded them to go in the business. By the way, I didn't have any money. But I had the knowledge. And we formed a company called AMG Labeling, which stands for Alex, Mike, and Gary. I continue selling and purchasing and some sort of managing. And everything went sour and my partner decided that he wants to run on his own. So I had no choice but to look for myself. And at that time, it was in March, March break in the school. My son was 18. Suddenly, he decided in a grade 13, he no wants to be, to go any sc anymore in the school. I didn't like it. But forcing somebody, sometimes it's a mistake. But I'm easy going, so I told him, all right, we're going to start the business. And I found this press. We bought it, and uh, he took it apart. We overhauled it. And I didn't have a paper in a you know, in a shop. I had a orders. So we went pick up some paper. We started off with fifty six hundred dollars, which three thousand dollars we borrowed it. And uh, I had experience selling, but I didn't have experience running the press. So I had to learn that too. He was learning with me, and both of us together. And we started making first dollar. And we were happy, but not enough to pay the bills. But we worked hard. And thanks God, we are very successful today. Was this the location? Uh, this was the location on Crawford Avenue. It was tough to meet the bills, to pay the bills, but we worked hard. And I want to take a moment to give the message, especially to the young people, if whenever somebody decides to go in the business, it's work, work, and work, and work again, seven days a week, 14, 16 hours a day. And three, four, five years later, you'll hit the million dollar sale. And uh, today it's, uh, George have done uh, May 6th, 1992. Six, uh, eight months ago, we bought the building in Detroit, correction, uh, Lincoln Park, Michigan. And uh, we have a couple of new machines over there, and a couple over here. And we are planning to move the operation, at least the U.S. operation, into Lincoln Park. We are considering keeping this place or Canadian operation since we hired a couple of salespeople on the road and they're doing a terrific job and look like that we'll keep Cana Canadian operation in Windsor. How come you uh, named Venture Labels? How come we named it? <laughs> 
every Sunday night there is a, on a Channel 9, after the news and journal, or if I'm not mistaken, there is no journal on Sunday, venture plays, entrepreneurs who started, when it started, how he made it, did he made it, but I liked it, the name venture, more like adventure. And since we didn't have too much money or backup, I decided, well, let's try the adventure. But instead of calling it adventure, we call it adventure. And it turned out to be a very good adventure. How is the business right now? They say recession. I would like to see the recession. We are busier and busier day-to-day -day basis. There is a time that we get in one day more orders today than we did first year in a month, maybe even two months. What is your involvement with Serbian community? Oh, that's another story. <laughs> uh, by the way, to finish it off uh, on this uh, venture label, I had enough guts and I put my son into the business. And it's, you know, the way they say it. It's, he's the owner, but I'm the boss. And in Detroit, or Lincoln Park, both of my kids are shareholders. Alexander is a president, and Angelica is a vice president. So when I die, they don't have chance to fight each other. And now back to the Serbian community. As I mentioned earlier, in 65, I inquired about a dance group. I was a dancer back home. Nothing special, but I loved it. Then in Toronto, I was a member, one of the best groups in North America called Stragilovo. Just a dancer. And Windsor, since the Windsor had a group, but then they discontinued the group, or whatever happened, I, don't, I really don't know. Two story. They persuaded me to be a teacher, to be a choreographer, to, to get the kids together and show them what I know. Well, I didn't know too much, but I decided, well, if there is nobody better, I'll do it, I'll challenge. And from 1965, first group that we started was, uh, uh, help me, <laughs> Dana Rajenovic, Helen Masanovic, uh, Lily Chuk, Jeannie Ljepova, uh, Snežana Stojković, Angie Kuzmanovic. By the way, they're all married and they have kids and I had a chance to teach their kids. And not just their kids. I even had some grandchildren or their children chance to teach. And I was, for a couple of years, uh, I believe a couple of years, kind of manager in an old Serbian hall. And stuff like that, always involved cooking when it's a carousel. I am well known for Lala's hamburgers, uh, which is a pleskovica. I made it Serbian way. And kubasa and chivaprici rajnici, that was all done on a carousel time outside on an open pit. That's about all what I have to say. <laughs>